thank you for, um, for being here. This is uh, incredible. As one of the co-founders of SoCap, it's just an incredible thing to see. Uh, Rosalie said maybe 1,900 people here this week. So, um, But I am really, really happy to be here today because it's, we're, we're talking about something that's really deep, deeply embedded in me in, in the way I think and the way that, that we think at Halloran. And um, I often um, point to a man who I view as the prophet of this movement, the, 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 the person that had it figured out to such detail in big, in big swatches of what was necessary, um, a man named Buckminster Fuller. And um, he really dedicated his life. He called, it, he called his life himself guinea pig, guinea pig B, B for Bucky. And he dedicated his life. He thought that if he acted who he was, to, to be who he was, just like a flower is a, a flower in nature, that he would get all the resources that he needed to be successful. And as part of that process, he questioned himself as to what really, what, what was the role of humans in this? What, what, he thought that there was a natural coordinate system that he called synergy. And he thought, after much reflection, that, that human beings are essentially information gatherers, gatherers and problem solvers. And that since the beginning of time, since, since the beginning of man, that there have been these isolated experiments around the world about how to survive, how to increase their own well-being. And that only when we started to build these more sophisticated transportation networks and now incredible communication networks that we started to be able to compare these solution sets or these experiments that were happening around the world. And um, it's this kind of lens that I think is crucial to understanding how to, how to solve problems, that, that we have to look at things as ecosystems. And so at Halloran, we have found uh, a great partner now in Lemelson in thinking about ecosystems and networks that support these ecosystems. And what we believe is that in our short lifetime, in six years of, of Halloran Philanthropies, that we think that we've gotten smarter faster by thinking this way, that, that none of us is as smart as all of us, that we've been able to build much more rapidly dependable networks of trust that allow us to act with more confidence, even in very risky situations, and that enhance, enhance our ability to identify opportunities with high catalytic val value. What, what I'm calling cascading cycles of impact. And um, I think that uh, what we're trying to do is, is play a role with others in sort of weaving these ecosystems, I, um, observing these ecosystems, and how the interaction of this really, it's this connective tissue of networks that are supporting them, things like the TED, X platform that, that creates this incredible archive of knowledge that's shared globally from a very local place. The Hub Network, where you have now over 40 um, physical locations around the world that are doing these isolated experiments, but with others, collaboration. Um, and I think that part of, I think what all of this is leading up to is a social innovation movement. That it's not just business and, and finance and, and uh, entrepreneurship, <coughs> but it's anybody, it's connecting anybody in the world that's identifying their own passion, their own abilities for, for the common good, for, for, to, to try to improve our lives. 
So uh, that's the, that's the uh, perspective that we're taking at Halloran in Oaxaca at a very local level, in Mexico, in Brazil, in Colombia, and now uh, in India and, and a little bit in Africa. And um, it, it, it reminds me of when, before Kevin and, and, and the rest of us started SOCAP, we, we did a project aimed um, in, uh, in Mali around malaria. And what we learned very quickly is there were 50 organizations working on malaria. And they were all taking a very top-down approach and, and not really getting to, to co-create a solution with locals. And I'm reminded of another story of an African village, a, a group of organizations that were, were really trying to solve the AIDS issue in a very local area, in a local village region in Africa. And they, they thought, we should build a school or an institute here. And the locals kept saying, build a soccer field. And they said, well, I don't, why would we build a soccer field? And they continued to develop the institute, which had very little impact. And then they finally came to the, to the conclusion that they needed to talk to the locals, and they said, build a soccer field. And they built the soccer field. And what the soccer field did is that it allowed them a natural context, a, not, a very, very natural place for young people to learn about AIDS and what they could do to, to, to prevent it, which made much more sense to the people that, that were affected. And this is the second part of the hypothesis that I think that the thesis that, that, that both Abby and I share is how do you co-create these kinds of solutions together? How, how, how do you start from a grassroots level? As outsiders, as insiders, where you're really trying to help, but, but how do you do it? And um, I want to bring up Abby to talk about how, through a really human-centered design and the, the development of a very supportive local ecosystem, the co-development of a, of a very local ecosystem, that it makes all the difference in the world. Abby.